Welcome to The Other Discovery Show, the podcast that is not about podcasts. It's the bonus show from the Podcast Discovery Show that's about all of the other things that we've discovered throughout the week. I'm Kirk. And I am Zach. And we're going to start off the show with the Podcast Discovery Club discovery of the week. This is from our good friend Keith over from the Pop-Up Filmcast. Keith. So, Zach, you actually know a little bit about this. I had never heard about this I before. Have def- this is a very famous, well, infamous. Infamous, there you go. Because this was one that, for a long time, Major League Baseball didn't want to talk about. <laughs> and you're about to find out why. So, 50 years ago today, this was shared by Keith in our club, uh, Doc Ellis threw a no-hitter while on LSD. Um, so... First of all, my first question to Zach was, how can you play baseball while on LSD? Like, that doesn't seem... I I, mean, I've never been on LSD, so I'm not sure. I haven't done it, but just from general awareness, that's not something where you can do a lot of... Well, I wouldn't be able to do anything, it seems like. I I don't know. I just... (laughs) No, I think he just got into the zone. He was seeing special shapes in the sky that pointed pointed to the strike zone. I love how, you know, in the story they talk about, like, basically he tells that, that he was, that he did LSD and, um, someone says, what are you doing? You have to pitch tonight. He's like, nah, I don't have to pitch till Friday. And they're like, it is Friday. (laughs) 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 And and he asks, well, what happened on Thursday? (laughs) This is, this is, this is, this is why it validates my question. How do you pitch while on LSD? (laughs) That's a secret. He's always on LSD. It's just, it's a crazy story. Uh, he, I don't know. No, but he not only pitched, it was a no hitter. Yeah. A no hitter. (laughs) Yeah. There's not a lot of no hitters. It wasn't just, Oh, he managed to pull a game together. wait, Wait, I do love this quote. I don't think any of us in the Padres dugout had any clue that he was throwing a no hitter because we had runners on every inning because <laughs> of how many fouls he was throwing. <laughs> oh, so like he would he would definitely throw like at least he'd walk one person per inning. Yeah, that's why it's not a perfect game. It's just a no hitter. So he was either throwing that sweet sweet cheddar or he was throwing it nowhere and people were just walking. It was just a, it, it's a great story. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's, it's always interesting to hear about people that were highly medicated during successful times. Cause was it, I feel like I don't want baseball is the worst. I feel like, no, there was a tennis player. I'm not even going to say the name because I can't remember, but a very famous, I'm, I have a thought, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to like accidentally slander a guy, but a very, very successful tennis player came out later and said that he was doing meth for a lot of it. Meth? Yeah. Of all things. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's still probably not worth saying. You can look it up. But yeah. No, but really? I mean, meth is like you're, you're tweaking and yeah, that's not, energy and I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, don't, I, I don't understand it, but very, very successful tennis player was using meth. That's crazy. So thanks, Keith. Thanks for sharing that in the Podcast Discovery Club. And if you want to be part of the Podcast Clever Club, all you got to do is go on our Facebook and just join it. I mean, we'd love to have you. As long as you treat people nicely, there's not really any other rules. Just That is basically the only rule. <laughs> yeah. So tell us what you've discovered throughout the week. We're not looking for random fights in there. No. So this week I discovered something that the name of it was so interesting that I had to look it up. The Church of Universal Suffrage. Have you heard of this? Never. It is an organized religion. I'm going to just read you their their thing. The Church of Universal Suffrage is officially registered with the state of Tennessee as a nonprofit religious institution. We hold regular weekly Sunday service where we meditate on the nature of voter suppression and corruption. We also hold every voting day in the United States to be an official holiday reserved for meditation on the nature of voter suppression and in celebration of our inalienable right to vote. Endowed to us by our creator, along with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. This is like this entire church is about they want every voter like every voting day to be a national holiday. That's the entire basis of this religion 
is because I guess I don't think people can discriminate against you for taking a religious holiday leave. Mm. So if you join this church, it's a religious holiday. You can take a religious holiday and go vote no matter what. Interesting. So it was just, I, I, I've never really heard I've of anything like this. Never heard of that. Where it's a thing, but like I'm looking at their website right now and they have upcoming holidays, which I'm assuming is just going to be days that you can vote. Yeah. Early voting, <laughs> state and local election, early voting, presidential upcoming election. Upcoming holidays. Yeah. Holidays are literally all election days. Absentee so, ballot request form, literally on their website. Go up a little bit. So early voting is their Halloween. Um, no, this is Halloween. Oh, okay. That's, that's 4th of July. Oh, that's their 4th of July. Halloween. Halloween is the second part of early voting. <laughs> Election day I don't know is what, their Christmas. It has to be their Christmas. And that's their Thanksgiving. No, this is the this is the real Christmas. This is Thanksgiving. That's presidential. Oh, uh, you're right. You're presidential right. election. State November. and local is their Thanksgiving. Yeah. I or maybe you. even something like weirder. I'm trying to think of like one of those weird holidays. It's like a throwaway. Arbor Day. <laughs> what is it about trees? Yeah. Solstice. Solstice is way more historical than tree day. Yeah. Although, don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate like trees. trees. I like trees. No, but I just thought it was really funny that there was an entire church dedicated to just... How about we just make a petition to like, let's just get rid of Christopher Columbus Day because it's a... Uh, Columbus Day... Eh, Columbus is a really bad dude. <laughs> Maybe let's get rid of that one and just make election day an actual holiday. Yeah. No, I would much rather. I would, if that was a thing that I could vote on right now, no doubter. Election day is becoming uh, a holiday. But uh, the other thing I see on this, and I, I hadn't even seen it, but they have a thing for reporting your minister because if a minister ever tries to press you into voting for a, speci a specific party or candidate, that's not allowed. It's basically <laughs> just your right to vote. It's not any kind of, there's no leaning allowed. So yeah. Interesting. If you, if you believe in No, is it talking about. <laughs> no, there's ministers. This church is, mini there's yeah. actual ministers. Yes. They I have thought, meetings on, on I thought Sundays. this was like, you know, like you can get ordained by church of the internet to. I mean, you probably can. Thing. I can't imagine there's, there's ministers of this church. Yeah. Interesting. They have, they have regular weekly Sunday service where they meditate I on voter suppression. I kind of thought it was a joke. I don't think it is. I guess it could be, but I don't think it is really. Wow. I think it's niche. I don't think there's a whole lot of people involved in this church, mainly because it's, it's weird to like, I mean, I'm all about universal suffrage. I think everybody yeah, can get, get behind that. I found a today I learned that I really liked. Now I'm a big sci-fi fantasy nerd. I really like those books and I had heard this guy's name many times and Zach, you've read his books, Terry Pratchett. Um, I have not read any of his books yet, full disclosure, but, and I, I think I will, I've heard of Discworld many times. I mean, it's kind of like the penultimate, you know, sci-fi book. Is it sci-fi or fantasy? No, it's Which fantasy. It's a fantasy. It's fantasy, but he kind of takes a funny lean to it. He's not, it's not taking himself too seriously, but it's still very, very clever and well-written. It's real. It's really good. I so, highly recommend it. On this today, I learned. I learned that he was knighted, which is cool. You know, you're a knight and what whatnot. But he took it like five steps further. Not only was he knighted, but he went and forged his own sword for his uh, his his knight sword. You know, his sword for being knighted. Pretty epic. Not only that, he took it. Another step further, and he dug up the ore for the sword. Okay. He took it even further than that. He found meteorite to melt down and put into his sword as like magical. If there was any magical qualities or whatever, he's like, why not? It's in there now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can't hurt to try, can it? Uh, this is his quote. Several pieces of meteorites, thunderbolt iron, you see? Highly magical. You got to chuck that stuff in, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> See that, and that sounds like his books. That's how he. he it's kind of just funny like that. The metal was then shaped into a sword by a local blacksmith, finished with silver work, and stored by Pratchett in a secret location, apparently because he feared it might pique the interest of the authorities. It's because he, he has a magic sword now. They have to, exactly. they have to lock that thing down. <laughs> he, he's quoted saying, It annoys me that knights aren't allowed to carry their swords, <laughs> he said. 
That would be knife crime. <laughs> that would be knife crime. <laughs> because apparently there is specific laws to knives in, in the UK. Uh, but it's just, it was a great... The fact that this fantasy author was knighted and then made his own sword... Oh, he's... No, he's a character. Gives me life. Didn't we talk about what he did with his unfinished books on here before? Oh, yes. Yes. He, he took... For anybody who doesn't know, he, yes, took we a, he took the hard drive that had all of his unfinished works that he did not want completed... <laughs> posthumously and he ran over them with a steamroller that was like at like i think right after his, his death yeah right? it was in his will it was in his will <laughs> that's that, what it was that they must be destroyed so he just he always was a character and seriously his books are great you would you would like them. that definitely makes me want to read his books even more i'm going to be reading them fairly soon yeah he's pretty awesome so i discovered something this week because i am subscribed to a subreddit which is in some ways dangerous because it's called EDC everyday carry. So it's a lot of people with very expensive pocket knives and like, it's basically whatever random stuff you carry every day. So like your phone, people have like a lot of people carry like flashlights, which I don't get. Yeah. I don't get that either. They do. Uh, pens, no, pe- notebooks, pens. you know, but they try to like elevate all of it. Like, so if they're going to carry a pen every day, they're going to carry a really nice pen. You can spend a lot of money on a stupid pen. Oh, you can spend a lot of money on a pen. It's nuts. No, and they and they will. And so they essentially they just post these little nice like Instagram pictures of all their stuff laid out. <laughs> and, you know, they use a lot of people go with like a theme or whatever. But that's aside. If you're interested, it is, I think it's just called EDC. Um, I thought it was a type of music. What does EDC stand for? Early dis- dystopian Christian music. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Early dystopian Christian. If that's not a genre, I want it to be. I want to know what that sounds like. <laughs> but I saw on there, some guy had, it looked like a coin with a skull on it. Okay. It looked like, you know how they have like AA coins? Yeah, where yeah, it's like yeah. 10 years yeah, and that you yeah. carry them because you just have it in your pocket and it's like a remembrance mm-hmm. thing. But his just has a skull, and I was like, what is that? And then in the comments, he said, it's it's a skull, like, carry the skull. I was like, carry the skull. That is a whole thing. Carry the skull. So what is it? You already have a skull and a heart. How you use them is up to you. Carry the skull reminds us to try and make a little more of a positive impact each day, appreciate and cherish life more, and give more. So really? essentially, you carry, and you don't have to actually carry it. You don't have to actually carry it, but you carry this symbol... And this is like what it stands for. Uh, The exact meaning is different for everyone because we each have our own truths and purpose. There is no right meaning, but carrying the skull normally means start with these fundamental ideas. The heart. Using our hearts in a positive way. We carry the skull because we've made a commitment to give a little more than we normally would each day. Sometimes we'll make mistakes along the way and that's okay. We carry the skull as a reminder to forgive ourselves and keep trying. It's not a commitment to be positive or perfect all the time. It's not even about giving everything you have every day. It's more about just choosing to give a little more than we normally would each day with the goal of making a little ripples that positively affect others. Imagine the effect of more people doing just a little more good each day. If more people just smiled at someone, they wouldn't have. Used technology in a way that bettered mankind. Decided to pay one one thing forward or made time to help one person or just made it a point to give back a little more today. The ripple effect would be amazing. I love this. Yeah. So where can I buy my skull coin? And then the skull, I want one. The skull is just tomorrow's Wait, so, not promised. So is there, there's a difference. There's a heart one and there's a no, skull they're, one. They're like together. Okay. You know, it's, okay. it's the two, two things. sides of the same yeah, coin. It's the two, ah. Yeah. It's the two things. <laughs> and the skull is essentially just, we're not promised tomorrow. The, the finite nature of everything. So it makes you really be centered on today. I won't read this whole, but that's what it's about. It's about being present in the time you're currently in because you're not promised tomorrow. So be there when you're there. And so that's what carrying the skull is. You don't have to carry something. You can give them to people. You can buy coins. A lot of people on Etsy make Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So you can go find whatever kind of different, whatever your style is, really. You could probably find something along that, that path. And some people make them, you know, but... They do have on their website, which we'll link in everything. So there's a website for Carry the Skull. Yes. With this concept, yeah, this and idea. It's, 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 a, it's just a WordPress site. It's literally just, it was like, and that's the thing that kind of got my interest. I'd never heard of this. Yeah, I'd never heard of it either. But I love the premise of it. Yeah, for because sure. Because you just have something in your pocket that just reminds you, like, just try little things throughout mm-hmm. the day, you know? 
And so they do have some uh, some references of people who make the skulls that you can you can carry, and and there's also one guy who you can send him pennies, and he'll stamp them with the carry the skull logo. That's cool. So you can you can do it with just a uh, just a penny. So there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff, and I I found out about it, and it was awesome. Did you ever get into like? Is there anything you carry every single day? I mean, besides like your phone. No. Did you ever get into like a knife every day? I, I mean, I have a knife at work. The but. problem is I even got like a small pocket knife and it was much easier to carry. I would always end up leaving it in my pants and it would like get in the washer. And oh, yeah. Then my wife would be mad at me because she, because you hear it in the dryer. She's like, hey, you left your knife in your pocket again. I'm like, dang it. So no, I've, I've never had something continuously uh, in my pocket other than my wallet and my phone. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't even do my wallet anymore half the time. Yeah, no, I've started. It was like, I don't know. It just, it felt like my posture was all weird because of my wallet. So I would, I stopped having it in my pocket all the time. But I do have like my Leatherman at work now. Yeah. And that's helped me many times because it's nice to sometimes when something explodes out in, in the greenhouse we work at, uh, mm. it's nice to have that on me. But no, that's not even all the time, like outside of work. It's just for work. So I found an article from history.com and (laughs) it's funny and then it gets a little bit sad, but it's still kind of funny. Um, Boris Yeltsin, I don't know very much about him. I just know that he was, you know, the Russia guy for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, (laughs) The Russia guy. Yeah, the Russia guy. The the president of Russia for a while. Um, but apparently he was the president of Russia during the Clinton era. And they had this like really weird relationship where they would like come visit each other a lot and stuff like that. There's some really crazy stories of when he would come visit Clinton. He would always stay at... They have like a specific um, name for the the uh, the name of the house that he stayed at. Blair House. Well, it's like a guest it's, house I think it's one White of the, I think it's a guest house at the White House. But... This story is what caught my interest because it's funny and it's just so Russian. Um, The weirdest, they talk about the different weird things that him and Clinton would do, uh, but the weirdest incident in their professional relationship was when Yeltsin got drunk, wandered into the streets in his underwear trying to get a pizza. (laughs) Is there more information on on this? There's a good bit of information. So he went and visited Clinton in 1994. Uh, and, um, basically he was found alone on Pennsylvania Avenue. This was, this is actually a quote, uh, dead drunk clad in his underwear, yelling for a taxi. <laughs> uh, Yeltsin slurred his words in a loud argument with the baffled agents. Cause the secret service like, Hey man, you need to come back to the house. <laughs> I, I, I want to know how he escaped. <laughs> Uh, He did not want to get back into the Blair house where he was staying. He wanted a taxi to go out for pizza. Uh, Branch is the person that wrote the memoirs for Clinton. Uh, When Branch asked Clinton how the situation ended, the president just shrugged and said, well, he got his pizza. (laughs) Uh, But the next night, Clinton said that he tried to do it again. (laughs) So apparently the pizza was good the night before. And he's like, you know what? We got to double up on this. But the thing is, it it was even worse the next night because he eluded security. It, it I no, was actually how is he sneaking by security? He's secu- it's so Secret Service. I actually was listening to my brother, my brother, and me today, and they were talking about every movie that has like the Secret Service is taking care of a small kid, and there's like a a kid, that, and and every single movie like that, the kid gets away at one point or another. Oh, one hundred percent. And um, that's exactly what this is basically. But it's a uh a president of another country. Yeah. Uh, and a drunk eluding. one. <laughs> but on this occasion, he, he made his way around the security or whatever. And he was mistaken as a drunken intruder. And it, it got serious for a little bit. He said, even Clinton said this one was a little bit more iffy. Cause like they thought he was a drunken guy trying to break into. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I mean, that takes next level. I don't, I don't even know. Cur- courage, I guess. Because to break out and then break, try and break back in is definitely the scarier part. Clinton thought this incident, although contained within Blair House, exposed even greater risks than the pizza quest. The pizza quest. 
I mean, sometimes you got to get a pizza. Then they talk about like, I, apparently he, uh, that was kind of his, he, he just, he had a drinking issue apparently. Oh, so that was kind of his thing. Yeah. So that's where it got a little bit, crazy. it got a little bit sad at the end. Cause they talked about an actual issue that he had. Um, apparently there was a press conference where him and Clinton were at and he called the U S press a disaster. Clinton just laughed it off, but Clinton knew that he was drunk during the press conference. <laughs> it was just, uh, it, it's pretty crazy. Dude sounds wild. Yeah. In fact, the, uh, the obituary uh, in the German newspaper <laughs> called, they, they titled it The Rise and Fall of the Drunken Czar. Yeah, that's uh, not great. Yeah, but it, it's still a funny story about when Boris Yeltsin was walking the streets of Washington, D.C. looking for yeah, a taxi to get a pizza. Yeah, sneaking away from the Secret Service. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a what was it? First kid? Isn't that the name of the the? That is <laughs> that you're talking about the one where he had Secret Service. It's yes. like the president's son. Yeah, I think wasn't one of the agents like uh, Sinbad or something. I think so. <laughs> I got. And that's how you know that it's a good movie. If Sinbad is playing a government agent, oh yeah, you know you're in for high quality. Only the best. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I don't know. I'd seen a lot of Sinbad movies when I was a kid. So I do want to throw in a bonus. Josh, yell, yell a noise. Yeah, any kind of noise. Okay, so Josh is here. Ooh. And he mentioned to me and Kirk, and we checked it out last week, a show that is on YouTube called Taskmaster. It is a British... Okay, game show isn't... Don't get the wrong idea. Mm-hmm. This is not Wheel of Fortune, but it's it's got game-like elements. I've learned that British TV is a lot different than ours. Oh, yeah. It's a lot less competitive and just focused on the entertainment and almost like, I don't know, it feels more wholesome. <laughs> no, it know? definitely is. I feel like that's... There's less focus on like backbiting and stuff like no, that. American which is TV what, got into like, dra- they wanted to milk the drama so bad. That's why it takes 40 minutes to get through the ending of an episode of something like a reality show because they're just like cutting different expressions and playing like serious music. I don't know. It's stupid. Because, like, if you watch, like, there's, like, cooking shows, and if you watch British ones, it's kind of cut It's about and dry. cooking. Yeah. It's about cooking. And then you go to American ones, and it's like... You stole to make my crying. arugula, like, and now I don't have arugula, and now I can't make my dish, and, then, and I hate you. And then immediately cuts the commercial. Boom. <laughs> and you hear that weird, like, sound. I listen yeah, to there's a, cats. I listen to a whole there's episode in the in the background just meowing at you. Every little thing of where that sound came from because it's on every single reality TV show ever. I do want to know what that sound it's is. It's a really good episode. You should listen to it. Is it a cat? It's not a cat. It's a weird instrument. I think it's that water instrument that you talked oh, about that one time. Oh, yeah, yeah, the horror. Yeah. Like yeah. Anyway, um, but anyways, there's a show called Taskmaster that everybody should check out. It's so a it's, funny show. It's really funny because essentially they give what is it? It's four. No, it's five. Five different comedians are each given like a task and it's recorded, but they don't do the task together. So they all do all of these things for each episode and then they all get together. They watch what each of them did and are ranked based on how well they performed each random task. So, okay. First episode, just for example, uh, okay. First episode, they have to eat as much watermelon as they can in one minute. They have to paint a horse while riding a horse. Like on a canvas. Yeah. Yeah. They have to paint a picture of a horse. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, they didn't yeah. paint the horse while they were riding it. They painted a picture of a horse while they were riding a horse. That, that didn't seem that difficult when they said it. And then when I saw them doing it, like, oh, yeah, that yeah, looks it's, really it's difficult. Beast. And then they had to empty a bathtub using stuff. Like, they just had to empty it. They, they couldn't they undo couldn't the pull drain. The plug. They couldn't pull yeah. a plug. There you go. And that's it. But that's the type of thing, and it's it's really really funny. So definitely definitely check that out. It's it was we had a great time watching that. Yeah, we watched that on our lunch break uh, this this last week. It was great. Mm-hmm. Well, before I do uh, the music of the week, thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate it. For those yep. listening, join the podcast discovery club. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to discover things together. Thank you so much for listening. And this week's band of the week is actually is a singer songwriter. His name is Matt Walker. Uh, I talked to him just last week for Creators Cove, 
And so that episode will be coming out soon. And he is improv comedian. He's a writer, really? actor, uh, singer, songwriter. And this song is called Fire. Thanks Fire. so much for listening. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. If my winning smile on secret May they never reach your ears If my skin screams obscenity May they never cause you tears Let's go.